Welcome. My name is Mike Gordon. If you have ever thought about going on an expedition to look for animals thought to be extinct, then you're going to enjoy these next series of videos that we're going to do. We have with us three people who have been in the field and they're going to talk about what it takes to be an explorer and to find these animals that are thought to exist. My guests are Milt Marcy, Pete Beach, and Wayne Hall. Milt, tell us how you got involved in hunting for these animals. Well, uh, I was uh, influenced a great deal by the work that Bill Gibbons did back in the 90s, actually 80s, 90s, and up through early 2000s. And uh, I started financing his expeditions to West Africa in the search for uh, what we might call dinosaurs. They called uh, different names over there. Um, and so I I funded a number of his expeditions, and then I've also gone on some of those expeditions to West Africa and New Guinea, and this has all happened over a period of about 20 years. Okay. Pete? Well, I was brought into this by Milt. Um, I have been to the Congo Rainforest a couple of times, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, that is New Britain Island, which is right next door, and uh, many other dozens of other expeditions um, looking for various animals, flying animals, uh, marine animals, and uh, what we call dinosaurs. And Wayne? Okay, um, I was influenced by Milt Marcy and Peter Beach. Uh, believe it or not, I read about them in a book and I met them once in a creation conference. And the friendship kind of grew from there and uh, then I kind of put the question of, uh, anyone want to go to uh, Lake Okanagan? And I put it up to him. So, overall, that's how I got involved with doing uh, uh, field expeditions. I've been to Lake Okanagan four times, and uh, we've seen stuff we can't explain. So, I'm, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do have some idea on practices that you should and should not do and we'll cover that in earlier or next videos you might say. So for the purposes of this video we're going to talk about the mindset that it takes to go on these expeditions. Milt, what I mean what is the mindset when you're getting ready to go out onto an expedition? I mean you're kind of get excited and then what happens? How do you? I think you have to have a deep-seated belief that these creatures do exist uh, because you're going to spend a considerable amount of time uh, looking uh, with basically no reward. It's like looking for a gold, golden needle in a haystack that you know is there. Somebody told you they put a golden needle in that haystack, but you're going to look a long time before you find it and you may never find it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to be prepared to deal with um, a lot of frustration uh, and the hope that you'll also have some reward along the way. Okay. Pete? Well, I would say uh, a mindset of um, determination. Uh, there's no room for bystanders in what we do. Everyone pulls their weight. Um, if you have one weak link, it can uh, jeopardize all the others in these expeditions. Uh, we may be on uh, the river, we may be uh, climbing mountains. Um, it, there are crocodiles, there are hippopotami, elephants, gorillas, snakes, insects. If all of any of these uh, upset you or m make you fearful, uh, you probably want to rethink what you're doing. It sounds like an adventure. We start out with a plan and it always turns into an adventure because it never goes according to plan. And if you don't like, uh, you know, winging it, f trying to find ways around situations, maybe even dangerous situations, then this is not the kind of thing you'd really want to do. Wayne? Well, yeah, uh, I think Pete basically covered it in a nutshell, but um, I'd like to add also that um, you shouldn't go on an expedition thinking that you're going to make a lot of money doing this. Uh, you should look at it as being a donation. If you just want to look at it as being, I'm going to get a picture of this animal, I'm going to get the news media 
on me, you know, we're going to make all sorts of cash doing this. Uh, this organization, Animal Discovery, is, is not for you. Uh, we're not looking for a free, easy ride. Uh, it's self-sacrifice, and you're going to have to go there with the mindset that you're contributing to this project. You may get no return on your investment. Um, I've come back empty-handed from different expeditions without anything to show for other than I was there and video footage and stuff like that but that's life there's no guarantee you'll see something there's no guarantee that it's going to show up for your camera you okay know? okay so this is not the uh, romantic notion that that it's easy to have it well, let's go on an adventure and get a tent and go hike and camp and Hunt for Sasquatch, right? And go home and have lunch on Thursday. The types of things that you guys are looking for, you got to be ready for a, a, a slog, but there's got to be some enjoyment in this. What is the most enjoyable thing you take away from it? Bill? Uh, I enjoy being out in a, a place that's usually far, far away that I've never been to before and experiencing uh, different cultures and a different terrain that I hadn't seen before. So this is it, it beyond actually finding or looking for the creatures that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But it, you, you get little tidbits of information along the way too about this creature that you are looking for. And so you're putting a puzzle together mm -hmm. and, and then you're trying to go out into the wild and match that puzzle with what you're seeing with your eyes. And every now and then you get rewarded and find something that matches the puzzle. And that, and that and that's makes a, it all That's worth. a reward, yes. Pete? Uh, it's the people. I enjoy so much uh, meeting new people, and especially those who have uh, never met people like us. And um, we've been very fortunate, I think. I would say blessed. And that the people that we've met have been very outgoing, helpful, uh, even trying to uh, make sure that our were healthy and that we were safe, uh, but in unsafe conditions. I've been saved more than once in my life um, in these uh, adventures. And, but the people, they're so nice in many cases. In some cases, they're not. But uh, to meet the, the people and just uh, enjoy their company uh, from a different culture is just uh, tremendous. For you, Wayne, what's the, what's the big, what's the enjoyment part of it? Well, uh, I would say that entirely depends upon the subject that we're studying. Uh, for field research uh, at a lakeside, I enjoy just being by the lake. There's something about being on the water, that's <clears throat> looking at the water, uh, the serenity and stuff like that, seeing stuff go by. Even if I never see any uh, mystery animal, you might say, it, it's still enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, yeah, the, the people do make a difference. Like, we have uh, different contacts and stuff like that. And when you get to establish contacts and you uh, do some field research with them, whether you uh, find your quarry or not, you still have that experience of being with like-minded people, and that's very, very positive. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that really helps. Okay, um, so there is an enjoyment aspect to this. What is the, what's the worst part of it? I mean, it, it's, you got to stay in, in Motel 6s, right? Five-star hotels. No, 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 no. Sleep in, in beds and, no? No, no, not all the time. Well, actually, yeah, we did have a pretty nice hotel when we were, <laughs> when we were waiting out the hurricane that had gone through. Um, but I think uh, probably the, the one thing for me is the day after day after day sitting there looking for this thing in anticipation. A, a week goes by, you haven't seen anything. Another week goes by, you're there all day long scanning the horizon, scanning the horizon. And when we were on the river in Africa, you know, you're, you're going up the river and you're seeing various things here and there, but you think there's something around this bend? Nah, it's just a log that's, that's shaking in the water, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's disappointment. You're not seeing what you want to see. And you just wonder, am I going to see it this time? Or, you know, uh, just dealing with the disappointment, I think. Okay. 
Pete? Well, I would say most people would assume that you're going to have some sort of proper hygiene during this. <laughs> uh, or like a camp out, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, uh, there's a jungle uh, that pretty well serves for uh, purposes of hygiene. It, uh, it gets cold at night. Sometimes if you're up in the, in the mountains, like we were in Papua New Guinea, it gets cold at night, very cold. Uh, sometimes it gets very hot. Sometimes there's uh, problems with uh, insects, uh, mosquitoes, oh. malaria, uh, fire ants, <laughs> fire ants, uh, black black uh, flies. Uh, we've come home from uh, expeditions where it took a month to get rid of the uh, parasites that have infected us. So I would say, uh, have fun. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Wayne. Uh, yeah, I think Pete basically covered some of the most common annoyances insects. Um, uh, even in uh, civilized areas, you know, you still can have problems with insects where the, uh, the yellow jackets are aggressive and they would like to sting you, you know? Mm -hmm. Or. They have some annoyances where you have other people who cause trouble for you. And you got to learn to deal with that. I mean, one time we were at Lake Okanagan up on Rattlesnake Island and you had a whole bunch of tourists come on by and we were trying, trying to conduct field research on that island and they keep on going through the channel almost doing laps. It, I mean, they weren't probably being malicious. They were just thinking, well, this is a fun place. Let's go through this channel, you know. Um, then, then sometimes you have trouble with other local people who don't like what you're doing or they think that you're somebody that's a, a problem. So that's, we're going to go into that more in another more. video. Yeah. But that, that's kind of, that's, you'll, you'll have the people problem too. Uh, not to mention that most of the time you see the ordinary. Uh, people ask me, have you ever looked for the non-existence of these animals? We don't have to look for the non-existence of these animals. They show up on a daily basis, hourly basis, minute by minute basis. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, we observe the ordinary all the time. So, if I'm, I have not been on any of expedition. I am intrigued, and I am becoming a, a believer. And. Uh, uh, I say becoming, I am a believer. I believe that these animals exist too, but I'm, I'm not prepared to go out on a, on a trip. But I do yeah. sense that this is very much like looking for gold, like the same kind of mindset that a miner would have. He knows that there's something there, and he's willing to, do what he, to go and try and find it and endure hardship to find it. And when he does, he's the happiest guy in town. But most of the time, he doesn't find it. Yeah, you, you end up empty-handed most of the time. But there are the times when you do find it. Yeah. What we have found is that even if we didn't find what we were looking for, we found clues that will help us next time. Ah, okay. Yeah, time yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of it isn't one uh, expedition is necessary. Uh, no, that's, that's a fantasy world. Most of the time it's establishing connections, building friendships, building relationships. Uh, doing that... Uh, you're basically like you're growing a garden, you might say. you got to nurture that garden. And over time, there's a possibility that it'll produce a crop for you. But there's always that risk that it's going to be a drought. You know, that's my particular illustration I choose to use for that. Um, yeah, okay. I think that pretty much uh, sums, sums up what the proper mindset that some people should have. Okay, as we conclude this introductory piece on on looking for these animals, in one word, would each of you give me your word about your mindset? Just one word. What my, what the most important part of your mindset to get you on this journey? Hope. Hope. Um of I just have to say something about boredom. If you're easily bored, this is not something you want to do. This 99% boredom, and then 1% elation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say uh, honesty is very important. 
honesty. You gotta be honest about your findings. Don't sugarcoat anything. Okay, so he came back with nothing. That's life. It's, That's better, it. it's better that you're honest about it. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be doing a series. This is the first in the series on mindset, and we're going to be talking about travel difficulties. We're going to be talking about tools. We're going to be talking about what to take, what not to take, what to do, what not to do, the ins and outs of going on a research investigation into the existence of animals that are thought to be extinct. I thank our panel for being with us. They'll be back, and we'll be talking about this. If you want more information, Wayne, where would they go to look? Um, you can go to animaldiscovery.org, uh, or you can also uh, check out our YouTube channel, uh, Dinosaur Discovery. Uh, Dinosaur Discovery and Animal Discovery are working hand in hand together. Uh, we share the same values and the same basic methods on how to conduct field research. Thank you for being with us.